Over the last two or three weeks, we've been talking about how characters and how their actions can influence their lives, how their actions can also lead to changes in characters in different stories. And we're going to continue that today by reading what's called a Russian folktale. Now, my suspicion is many of you don't know what a folktale is, so what we're going to do is we're going to hand out a text that is a Russian folktale, and you're going to get 60 seconds. And in that 60 seconds, I simply want you to scan the text, look at the illustrations, look at any captions you can find, and be able to identify what you think a folktale might be. So we'll put that up right there. So again, all you're doing right now with the text is scanning it really quickly, and you're trying to identify what might a folktale be. And you're going to have to infer here. You're going to have to take the background knowledge you have and the information that you get and the context you have to try to answer that question which will ultimately lead to our big goal for today, which is identifying key details in a folktale. So now that you have your story, what I want you to do, again, we're going to give you exactly 60 seconds. You're just scanning at this point. Based on the illustrations, based on a little bit of the text you might look over, what do we think a folktale might be? Exactly 60 seconds. Go ahead. All right, leave your text exactly what it is. Find your writing coach um, and explain what you think a folktale might be. Iris, what did you guys come up with for what you think a folktale might be? OK, so a folktale might be an old story. Go ahead and call somebody. Okay, so it's an old story, maybe similar to a fairy tale. All right, so perhaps it's a story that's an old story that helps explain something that occurs now. We've got one more person. So much like Olivia described, maybe there are these magical elements. And this is really impressive. So a folktale is many of the things that you guys just described. A folktale is simply a story that's shared by a specific culture, typically happened a long time ago, and it does try to explain something. It frequently has talking animals, so things that have been, uh, there's some personification. Uh, and it typically was an oral tradition, so it was shared over and over um, by people orally, not through the written word. What I want you to do now is I want you to read just the first paragraph. And you already know what should happen in the first paragraph of a story, or in this case, a folk tale. And I want you to tell me what parts of a plot do you see in this, the first paragraph. And you're welcome to annotate what you find. All right, let's do utensils down, hands up. All right, in a narrative, Kingston, what kinds of things should we find in the first paragraph? If it's a story, a folktale, a narrative, what are we going to find? Evidence. Okay. <coughs> um, characters and setting. All right, so we're probably going to find characters and setting. We're going to find one more thing. What's that thing going to be? Yeah. Okay. All right, so in our first paragraph, we should find a setting. And Davin told us, right, that's going to tell us when it took place. We're going to have some kind of rising action, and we're going to be introduced some characters. With the people seated next to you, make sure you've annotated for it. Have you found characters, some rising action, and do you have some kind of setting? Okay, and we're back together in three, two, one. 
Uh, Caitlin was my last speaker. Go ahead and call on somebody. Welcome to Cold Column to help us understand what are these elements that we found so far. All right, so we have Ivan and Mary as our characters. All right, we have Cottage as part of our setting. All right, so we have this rising action that we have these two characters who are sad. Okay. So if I look at Addison, she's annotated for the fact that uh, they are lonely, and that's why we get this rising action. So here's what you're going to do for me. You're going to finish reading the entire story silently. Then I want you to partner read it, just like we have done in the past. And then, when you've done those two things, you're going to grab your pencil and you're going to annotate. And you're looking for those key details that help us understand more about that rising action, that problem that we've got two characters who are lonely. So silently read it all the way through, partner read, and then we're going to annotate. I am Snow White, your little daughter, explained the figure. She threw her fairy-like arms around Ivan's neck. She bent down to her. Mary, in turn, received a sweet embrace. Then, weeping for joy, they quickly took the girl into their cottage. No longer were Ivan and Mary lonely. Snow White wrapped led to them by the hour, and they never wearied of watching her. Her tiny feet pattered over the snow like those of some small white elf. So as you annotate, you're looking for those key details, those key events in this text, and we're reading only through paragraph 12. So go back, go through with your pencil, and you're identifying again those key details, things that link back to that first problem. So this one's great. So this is a key event because it goes back to here, right? This idea that they're lonely. Mm -hmm. Does this help us understand any of that? It's really descriptive, but it doesn't really get us back to here. Find, who are we going to find, Simone? You're going to find your confidence buddy. Lost and found, you're going to the active board. I'll find somebody for you. Explain other key details that you found. So we understand. The story begins with our rising action. What was our rising action, Alexander? Rising action was, and though Ivan and Marie were both kind hearted, the sight of the children having fun made them very sad. Okay. And why are they sad? All right. So we understand that at the beginning of the story, they're sad and lonely. So they look for a solution. What do they decide to do? They make a snowman. Yeah, they, well, they make a snowman. Then what happens? Okay, I'm going to put this as four. Yeah. 
Yeah, a stranger comes. Now you need two people. Remember, in a folk tale, something magical will likely happen. So if this is my sequence of events. These are my key details so far in our story through paragraph 12. Here's what you're going to do next. You're going to paraphrase or you're going to summarize for me what's happened in the story just through the first 12 paragraphs. So our clerks will give you a piece of paper. Um, when you have your piece of paper, go ahead. We'll give you five minutes for this. Summarize what's happened at the beginning of our story. Unexpectedly, the snowman come, comes alive. No longer were Marie and I be lonely. 